underway here in Newark. Tip controlled by the Dragons. Franz Mazanet with the ball. Here's a young man that I'm sure Bruiser Flint would like to get off early offensively. This is the matchup we were talking about. Damian Lee and Devon Sadler. Inside of the big, rough and off the mark. Devon Sadler is a big kid. Had a chance to watch him in practice yesterday, and uh, I think that's probably where the biggest challenge is going to be for Damian Lee is the, the body size. Lee is taller, but Sadler much thicker. Hagens to the inside, has nowhere to go, has to dump back out. Shot clock at nine. Three for three. Got it. If you took a look at the first possessions for each ball club, both teams were very patient, and both teams tried to go inside initially. That time, Delaware ended up getting a jump shot because of their action on the interior. They went inside, and then they came out with a jumper. Derek Tarmus hard off the heel, missing his first shot. Brinkley down low. And they're going to get McCoy early. Daryl McCoy called for the foul just as Josh Brinkley was making his turn towards the basket. In tonight's game, you're seeing quality, quality guard play. You've got Sadler and three in the backcourt for Delaware, and then Lee as well as um, uh, Massinet uh, for, for Drexel. Quality, quality guards who can create their own shot, shot, and both guys both ways can defend. So already a change here as Derek Thomas will now be guarding Devon Saddle. At least on this trip down, Massinet remains on three. And this time they get Ruffin, Darte Ruffin, the junior from Stoughton Mass, was all locked up. Watch this, the guy's battling on the interior. You see Ruffin not trying to give any space. Good call by the official because he hooked Brinkley's arms right there on the post up. With the great guard play that we have in tonight's game, Todd, it's clear, though, the game plan for both coaches is to try to go inside early and often. Get something established early on. Both teams have quality big men. Kyle Anderson loses the handle as he came off the screen. Here come the Dragons. Rough and all tangled up as Hagens does a great job defending him. Shot clock just now going below 20. Damian Lee sliding to the basket, can't get it to fall, and a huge rebound as Jamel Hagens comes away with it one-handed. Back comes Threek sliding in, gets the contact, no call. And they're going to say Devon Sadler stepped out of bounds, so the ball will go over to Drexel. Well, you get an idea of just how athletic both of these teams are on that last trip down. And this is a big rebound. And you talk about Higgins' athleticism. You see that he's fallen to the floor, floor and had to wherewithal to keep his dribble so the official didn't call the travel. And Jamel Higgins logs his 1,000th rebound as a blue hen. Very athletic big man. Doesn't have quite the same body build as the big men for Drexel, but he can get up in a hurry. Thomas for three, well off the mark. Three trying to knife his way, and he'll go inside to Big Brinkley. Brinkley drop step, goes up, nothing doing there, loses the handle, and it goes back to Drexel. Here comes Mazinette. Yet to score, stripped away by Kyle Anderson, but it'll stay with Drexel. I like Drexel's intentions. Right there is a turnover, so it's ideal to push it and look for a shot quick. If the shot isn't there on the push, you'll see Drexel pull the ball out and be as patient as they can to get a solid shot. Still deadlocked, 3 nothing. Delaware on top. And a turnover. Here comes Sadler, one on one with Lee. Gets bumped and maintains his balance. And that, talking about his body structure, is a strong kid. So Devon Sadler makes it a 5 0 Blue Hands lead. Dragons yet to score. Remember, the other night in 
Philadelphia, they had a hard time getting points early on against Hofstra. Motion offense coming. It's going to be an illegal screen. Take a look at, at Delaware on the defense again. You see him scrambling. Sally gets the steal, and you mentioned his strong body. But not just is his body strong, he knows how to use it. He bumps Lee just as he goes up for the shot to break his speed so that Lee had no chance in blocking that shot. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a score, knowing how to put that ball in the basket. And you touched on it right at the top of the show. He is just a junior. Big man Hagen showing that he can handle the ball. Gives it up to Sadler. Here's Anderson from the outside. Thought about the three. Drives into the tall traffic and probably should have put the shot up. It's stripped away. Tavon Allen handling the ball now is checked in for the Dragons. Allen has it stripped away, so Sadler gets his second steal. This time not bumped and lays it in for his second basket of the night. Well, Bruiser Flynn is not going to be happy with this. His team has been held scoreless for the first five minutes of the game as Anderson is called for the foul. 15.06 to play in the first half, and it's 7-0. Blue hands by way of the defense have the shutout going so far. his ability. He's light on his feet, changes ends very well. I love his second jump. Most guys can just get off the floor once. He can go twice. Could he play in the NBA? Uh, he's got to get stronger. I really think he's got to get stronger, and time will tell. You know, he, he'll have a chance, right. but it'll be very difficult, I think, unless he puts on a few pounds, and he'll have to work on his face-up game just a bit. So Bruiser Flint sends his Dragons out there, trailing 7-0. They've got five minutes to start this game without scoring. As they trail 7-0, Lee handling the ball. This is Mazinet, who needs to get a little more active. Younger, who's checked into the game, loses the handle, and he's fouled. Jarvis Street called for the foul, his first. You know, the motion offense, the Dragons seem to be coming off screens, doing a real nice job of exterior passing, but really no one's put up a shot yet. Lee gets his first look for a three. Rims out, Hagens with another rebound. Kyle Anderson again loses the handle. It's a two-on-one. Lee on Sadler and Franz Mazanet. That's a good sign for Bruiser Flint getting an easy basket and to break the deadlock of no score. Todd, that was a picture-perfect fast break. Neither guy was selfish. They passed it initially before they put the ball on the deck, forced the defense to commit, and then made the simple pass for the layup. Nothing pretty, just simple, basic basketball. Quick physical play down underneath. Kazembi Abif has checked in, and he's got he's got to handle Josh Brinkley, and he's got to be giving away at least 50 pounds. And watch the turnover right here by Delaware. You see, he fumbles the ball just a bit, and watch Lee gives it up right away, forces Salah to make a decision. They go back and forth until the Salah fully committed one way. Credit Lee for making a simple, basic. Accurate pass on, the, on that break. Josh Brinkley will step to the line and shoot two, a 68% free throw shooter. And knocks down the first. See, I think that's the key. We touched on the guards, and the guard play in this game is extraordinary. But I think the key to this game is if Ruffin from Drexel can get off or to see if Brinkley from Delaware can get off. Which one of those two other post guys can give their team that extra little oomph that, that they're going to need? Do you think the guard play cancels each other out and it's going to come down to the big men? Yes, yes. I, I think which bigs can help in terms of scoring. See, see, Drexel, part of their troubles, as you see, they only have two points, is scouting reports put so much emphasis on their guards, mm -hmm. Massinet, Lee, Thomas, when he has it going.
that the post guys now have to own up and take some of that weight off of those guys' guards in terms of scoring. Carl Baptiste checks in. They go very thin bench for head coach Monte Ross. He keeps his rotation very tight as Baptiste checks in the transfer from St. Joseph. Lee driving. Defenders met him there, and he gets the foul called as he hangs in the air. When you're struggling to produce points, Todd, the best way to do that is not just stand outside the three-point line and jack up shots. So credit Drexel for trying to attack the basket, to try and get some layups, and in doing so, they get into the free throw line. Lee, an 83% free throw shooter on the air, hits the first. Still just 9-3 with 13.36 to play. And Head coach Bruiser Flint says, I've seen this act before, fellas. Monday night at Hofstra, it wasn't pretty. I think we were at 11 to 8 with 10 minutes to go in the first half. Just could not get the offense going. They would go on to beat Hofstra 63-54 as the second half was a much different story. Lee hits the second. So the Dragons changing it up, bringing full court pressure, or token pressure now with Lee set down to put a little pressure on Devon Sadler, who can handle the ball. Hagen's being guarded by Ruffin. Turns, goes up. Big man knocked away. And it's going to stay with Drexel. Keel Younger handling the ball now for Drexel. 9-4, 13-0-8 to play in the first half here in Delaware. Younger gets in the lane, he gets it to rattle down. Akeel Younger with a nice shot. So the seven-point lead has gone away. It's now 9-5. Drexel has come alive. Bodies on the floor. Coaches love to see that. And three with a beautiful play down low and one. Three just has a knack for drawing contact when he goes to the basket. He's their second uh, leading free throw shooter on the ball club because of this move right here. Watch this. The ball scrambled. You see him. Nice little sliver move inside. He knew he had a biff on his back. He just gave him a little bit extra oomph so he can get that shot up to the basket. Jarvis Three, the 6'2 sophomore from Richmond, Virginia. That is CA tournament, which kicks off on March 9th, which you can see right here on the NBC Sports Network. So a smaller lineup now. It seems to be working for Bruiser Flint. Mazinet driving, gets the contact, can't get it to fall, was looking for the foul, and Baptiste comes away with the rebound. Sadler in the lane, beautiful dump off pass to Baptiste, goes up hard, can't get it to fall, and there to put it back, big number Jamel Higgins, number 44, Lurking around the rim. That possession, Delaware just outworked Drexel for that offensive rebound. Lee in the lane. Beautiful finger roll. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with what you said, Ron. You talk about the CA tournament and a team like Northwestern gets knocked off. It's wide open. Easily see these two teams in the championship. It's a dump down Baptiste for his first basket. Younger will back it out. Shot clock at 18. Damian Lee gets the contact, but does not get the foul. He did a great job of faking, get his man up in the air, but the official saw nothing. Sadler now going to work on Younger. A little bit of a mismatch there, and he wants the ball back. Yeah, 
and the reach in. Mazinet called for the reach. What do you think Drexel needs to do to get themselves back in this game, although they only trail by eight? They have to do a much better job at rebounding the bas basketball. Right now, they're losing that battle eight to two. They have to do a better job at competing with Delaware on the board because that gives them more shot opportunities. And you don't want to get, when you're on the road, you don't want to get annihilated in, in that area right. at all because that's the one area that can keep you close. Larry Savage checking in for Delaware. Goes down to Baptiste. Big kid, the transfer from St. Joe's, gets fouled and can't get it to fall. And Kazembe Abiff has seen, where was the foul? Drexel foul, number one, Kazembe Abiff, his third. Team Watch the patience right here in the post by Baptiste. He sells it, he's going to the middle, takes his time with a little shuffle dribble, goes up with the left hand jump hook. When I watch him play, I'm shocked when I go down and look at his stats and right. see he's only averaging three points because he's, he's highly skilled. He's a very cerebral ball player. He's one of those guys that I think he just has to have more confidence in himself because he clearly has a skill set. 6'9", Junior from Pittstown, New Jersey. As we mentioned, a transfer from St. Joe's. That'll send a biff to the bench. And they'll bring in Gordon Pantovich, the junior from Belgrade, Serbia, number 13. So Baptiste already over his average here in the first half with 10-19 to play, giving the Blue Hands a lift on offense for Monte Ross's squad. Now Drexel has to find some way to respond. They've got the athletes, they've got the ability, they just gotta find a way to get some points. Now their turnover picked off this time by Kyle Anderson. This time the foul's called away, and they're going to get Jarvis Street for the push-off. When you're looking at both ball clubs, Todd, you're seeing two clubs that really know each other very yeah. well. When one team calls out the play, the defense is calling the play along with them, and it's going to come down to which team is more fundamentally sound. Because both teams know, right. they know what, what each team is doing. So you're going to have to be sure with the ball and just will yourself to execute the plays that, that you're trying to execute. It's almost like in practice playing against each other. You all know what each other's doing. You just have to be the smarter and wiser as you go about doing it. Ron is a former player and coach. As Lee hoists up a three, it doesn't fall. How much can you add, or do you add anything this late in the season? No, no, you go with what you know. You add slight little wrinkles within what you're trying to do, but you don't try to reinvent the wheel. Your guys are finally getting to the point where they're comfortable in what you're running. You don't want to change too much. A lot of hustle on the court there as Thomas and Sadler go to the ground. The ball's going to stay with Delaware. Good hustle, good energy both ways. You see Drexel showing on that high ball screen. Ah, you got to be careful. Thomas, good hustle there, but when you're diving on top of guys' legs, that, that's a really, really tough way to go. Just be careful. Sadler kicks it over to Kyle Anderson. He gets his first look at a three off the mark. Drexel does a great job of keeping it alive and the hustle by Damian Lee to keep it with the Dragons. Mazinet, the CAA preseason player of the year, finally gets an open look in the lane and drills it. That time he made that look just too easy. Baptiste calling for the ball, being guarded by the much taller Pantovich. Brinkley down on the block. Just goes to work. They're going back to that matchup that right. I said. Darte Brinkley, Ruffin. Brinkley versus Ruffin. You know, who's going to have that edge tonight? Right now, Brinkley seems live. He seems energetic. And when you let him get the ball that close, he's such a tough matchup. Good footwork that time, I thought, by Brinkley. Squared up, then went back to his back to the basket move and was able to draw the foul on Ruffin. Come on, those guys are bigger than that. He, he could take a little bit more of a foul on that one, don't you think? I don't know. He got clobbered on that oh, one. Oh, come on. <laughs> There's a lot of body on that one, Todd. I like where you play that one. <laughs> so Josh Brinkley, shooting 68%, goes to the line and misses the first. You know what I never understood? A situation like that, a lot of contact in the post, you call the foul. Well, if you touch a guard on the perimeter, 
they blow a whistle. If you were to foul a guard. Body up like that, that outside. They'll call intentional <laughs> foul. And I never understood. A foul is a foul. They, they, yeah. they, they always think that big, big guys can take more punishment than guards. I don't know what that's about. That should be. Uh, a foul is a foul. And taking care of those skill players. <laughs> that's right. Exactly what they're doing. 19-10 as we go under 8-20 to play here inside the Bob on the campus of the University of Delaware. Both these teams with just two games remaining after this as Mazinet drives, and you pointed out earlier, Ron, you got to score, he's not getting the looks. Drive to the basket, get yourself to the foul line. That's exactly what Franz Mazinet is doing. It certainly hasn't been pretty basketball, right? but on behalf of both ball clubs, the game plan is perfect. Play inside out. If it's not there, drive it, try to attack the basket, try to get to the free throw line, because all the fouls that they're calling now, we're not going to see the effect of them until early in the second half or midway through the second half when guys have to start coming out because of, they've gotten their fourth foul. Mazanet, a 79% free throw shooter, misses them both, much to the light of the student section here. And the mighty Blue Hens maintain the nine-point lead as we come up on eight minutes to play in the first half. And they're going to get McCoy this time as Hagens was slashing through. Daryl McCoy just gave him a little bit of bump. The problem is when you're 260 and you bump someone and you send them flying, the officials are going to notice. <laughs> He's not I small. Would, I would hate to have to run into McCoy at any point in time during a basketball game. McCoy didn't even feel Hagen. No. He looked at the ref like, did I bump him? No. Both men listed at 6'9", but McCoy built much more solidly, so he'll go to the bench as Darte Ruffin comes back in. He's off the mark on the one and one. So no harm done as we go under eight minutes to play here. Mazinet still trying to get his offense on track. The CAA Conference Preseason Player of the Year. Remember, Drexel was picked to win the CAA at the start of this season. We talked about parity and how many teams could win this thing. We talked about the tournament. There's five or six teams. They'll take seven. Looks like Northeastern has got themselves a share of the regular season title. We'll step aside. Best. I don't know what, it looks like he's having a seizure to me. Is that, is that this generation's version of the Macarena? Is that what we're looking at here? What, Gangnam Style? Yeah, the Gangnam Style, uh, the Harlem uh, Shake. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. That's a little, <laughs> under, uh, that's a little bit above my pay grade. 1910 <laughs> here back in Newark, Delaware. The homestanding Blue Hands on top of the visiting Drexel Dragons in CEA play. Damian Lee back into the game. Nice finger roll. Using his length to get the ball around the defender and gets it in, cutting the lead to seven. Todd, I really like what I've seen from Lee. You know, he's getting after yeah. defensively, and also he's usually a guy that sets the tone offensively by taking jump shots. He's slashing, getting to the basket. I really like his approach so far in the first half. We had a chance to talk about it at the game we did Monday with Drexel and Hofstra, and you mentioned how he could certainly help out Franz Mazanet if he can start taking some of the scoring off the shoulders of Mazanet. Shot clock at five, three to hoist up a three off the target, and right there, Baptiste, but can't put it in. Big man's got to dunk that, don't you think? Oh, Lee with an acrobatic shot, and Baptiste redeems himself with a big rebound and gives Damian Lee a shove, and the officials aren't buying it. Anderson. Well, one thing's consistent. The officials are letting him play on they both are. sides. Baptiste has fallen into two very good shots. He just hasn't been able to finish. Thomas off the mark. Three getting it ahead to Sadler. Derek Thomas now has the duty of guarding Sadler. And that time it was. Pantovich that came out and disrupted the offensive flow. What Drexel's doing, they're putting different bodies on Sadler. At first it was Lee, now it's Thomas. They're trying to keep him, keep his, keep him off his rhythm offensively. Brinkley loses the handle off his hip, and it'll go over to the Dragons. I want to remind you, Saturday, the balance of power in the Mountain West will shift on the NBC Sports Network. It all starts at 4 Eastern. With New Mexico taking on Colorado State, then Nevada tips off with San Diego State. Mount West doubleheader Saturday on the NBC Sports Network. Which brings me to my next question for my partner, Ron Thompson, who knows everything. Have you seen this much parity in NCAA men's basketball in a long time? I mean, there's there's not one team that really is the clear-cut favorite. I'd say Indiana right now is probably leading Canada as the number one ranked team, but 
you know, the goal of some team right now into the tournament, who would you pick? It, it's tough because, like you said, there's so much parity. There's so many ball clubs on any given night that once you see them play, as three gets all the way to the basket, that you can say, I can see this team winning. Syracuse is another team yeah. that I would throw in that mix because they're deep. They're built to take a hit. They could lose a player and still keep on going. Indiana, that's another one. There are a lot of quality, quality ball clubs that, you know, on any given night, Georgetown, they're playing really solidly right now. Michigan State, you have to throw in that mix as well. So a lot of good quality basketball. Bottom line, the fans will be the recipients of a great NCAA tournament this year coming up in less than three weeks as teams wrap up the regular season and get ready for their conference tournaments. Lee left wide open for the three, and he hits it. Kyle Anderson gambled on the steal, and Lee made him pay. So Damian Lee now leading score for the Dragons with nine. Baptiste once again on the blocks. Loses the handle momentarily and kick it back out to Sadler, who has been quiet for the last five minutes. Into the lane and gets the roll out. Sadler just reeled himself for that basket. It was solid defense, I thought, that time by Drexel, but because Sadler can score so well, you have to respect everything. You have to respect the pump fake, you have to respect, respect the jab step, and then he just puts you in a blender and scores it when he needs to. Both teams starting to feel it now as Derek Thomas steps back and hits a 15-footer. 23-19, it's a four-point lead. We've got four minutes to play here in the first half. Anderson, three, can't hit it. And I agree with what you said earlier today, Ron, talking about how these teams know each other so well. They just seem like they know exactly what play's coming. It just seems who's going to defend it better. It's going, it's going to come down to execution as well on the offensive end because of that. Which team, in spite of the other team knowing our, our sets, which team can execute? And when you need to execute your fundamentals, can you seal? Can you set a solid screen? Can you handle the ball with either hand? Post guys, can you turn over either shoulder to score? Lee. Wow. Someone's feeling it. And his, his outside jump shot is falling, and he's feeling good now. Because of the dive, he's done early in the game. In our open, how these two superstars, Sadler and Lee, who score so much, will be guarding one another and how it will affect them. And right now, it is Damian Lee who's gotten the best of it with 12 points here in the first half. Devon Sadler only with six. But don't forget, I talked about that in the open. Sadler is patient when it comes sure. to the scoring. He doesn't press it and just come down and take senseless shots. When they need him, he can put it up. Tries to kick it down below. Saw Baptiste lurking on the baseline. Couldn't get it through him, but it will stay with the hands. And it is Delaware on top. Devon Sadler getting it done in the lane.
Coming up at the half, we'll have highlights of Cincinnati at UConn. The latest NBA trades, including J.J. Redick, the former Duke star, on his way to Milwaukee. Mike Florio and Eric Casillas talk about Tony Romo's contract negotiations as the combine gets underway. That's all coming up on the Halftime Report with Carolyn Manor. J.J. Redick leaving Orlando, huh? Tell you what, they're talking about him getting asking for 10 million a year. Well, if you look at his numbers, he's doing really well this year. He's, well, he's, his point production has gone up each and every year he's been in the NBA. Certainly finding his range as Sadler steps back and finds his. Just before the shot clock goes down, Devon Sadler buries the three. Remember I told you, Sadler? Patient. It may, it may not come when you call him, but he's always right on time. He knew that shot clock was winding down and that play had to be on him. Four-point lead for the Blue Hens, 26-22 as we come up on 2.15 to play here in the first half. Motion offense, Dragons trying to find the man open. Thomas kicks it back to Lee, who's had the hot hand. Leading score with 12 points. Shot clock at five. Ruffin down the lane, can't get it to fall. Baptiste comes away with the rebound. Anderson. And Bruiser Flint is not happy. And that's an understatement. Fired up as they're going to take a look at this one more time. Kyle Anderson is a great three-point shooter, 34%. Here's what they're looking at. He clearly behind the line. Clearly behind the line. And, but Kyle did a good job in transition that time at sprinting the floor, getting set. He knew that the look was going to be on him because three in Sattler, they put so much pressure on the defense when they come in transition with terms of pushing the ball. He went, got spotted up on the wing and got his feet set and nailed it. I would not want to be in Bruiser Flint's doghouse. In his 12th year at Drexel, he does not look happy right now. Remember last year's squad, 29 and 7. They made it to the third round of the NIT. It should have been in the NCAA tournament. No question about it. Coming up on 90 seconds to play here in the first half. It's a seven-point lead for the Blue Hands. Mazinet is bumped, ball knocked away, no foul called. And it's going to go Delaware. And Bruiser's squad can't catch a break. Meanwhile, Monte Ross in his seventh year certainly liking the way his kids are playing. Sat through practice yesterday, and that's what he was asking for was energy and just doing the basics. And do that, he said, we'll be fine. And the reason Coach Flynn is so upset right now is because Drexel shot themselves in the play. Yeah. Two turnovers, not because of defense, just because of careless offensive handling of the ball. Back-to-back three-pointers. Damian Lee keeps it alive off the head of Anderson. And the ball will go over to Drexel. Bodies flying all over Everywhere. the place. The energy level and the effort on both parts is very good tonight. We're, we're, during, it's a minute left to go in the half. When both coaches go in their prospective locker rooms, they're both going to be pleased with the effort. No question about it. Remember the last meeting between these two teams, it was a 66-64 Delaware victory, and that was just back on January 28th. Schools only separated by about 40, 45 miles. Final minute of play here in the first half. Thomas B. guarded by Anderson, drives the lane, gets up in the air, and they're going to call Anderson for the reach-in foul. So the second foul on Kyle Anderson, the sophomore from Newark, Illinois. Take a look at this last possession, and we talked about the scouting report and each team knowing what each team is doing. Right there, you see Delaware, they're on uh, Drexel on each and every catch, each and every pass. A defender is right there. They seem to know where Drexel is going before Drexel gets there. And what happens, it's going to come down to guys just making good, solid one on one plays like Thomas just made to get in the paint to try and get to the free throw line. Thomas hits him ball, picks up his sixth point of the game. Shot clock at 29, game clock at 34. Right, 
Hagen's being guarded by Ruff and goes down low. Quickly comes up as such an explosive young man. Excellent one-on-one -on -one move that time, I thought, by Hagens. I thought he could have stopped a little closer to the basket, but he Well, you know, you're going to see a lot of weave action between the perimeter guys, as they've been doing. You're going to see it probably go inside to Ruffin and then back out to Massinet. Look for, if it gets late in the clock, look for them to set a ball screen for Massinet to try and turn the corner. Terrell Rogers checks into the game at 5'8". He is guarding Massinet. Look for Ruffin to come set a ball screen late in the clock if they can't get this shot for Lee. Lee for three. Off the mark. Thomas comes up the rebound, hoists it up quickly, and it's off the mark. So we'll go to the half, 31-24. Delaware on top of Drexel here in Newark. One half in the book. That's a great point, I think, Todd, that Drexel does not want to start this core, this half the way they started the first half. You're already down right now. You don't want to, you know, go the first seven minutes and struggle to score. And not to make excuses for the Dragons, but you got to remember Chris Fouch, the senior, who got injured in game three, fracturing his ankle as three draws the foul on Massanet. He is done for the year, and what a boost he would give them offensively if he was in the game. Well, him going down changed the chemistry from top to bottom on this ball club. You're talking about a guy that had over 1,400 points. So now what, what happens? Massanet, your starting point guard, has to spend a lot of time now playing off the ball because they need his scoring. They can't have him orchestrating everything the entire game. So you'll see Akil Younger come in and Massanet go to the two. And Massanet, though he can score, He's not your first line scorer. He's a guy that does well after he sets other guys up, and then you kind of forget about him, and then he gets into a rhythm. Three hits bull, so he now has 10 points, 33-24, nine point lead early on here in the second half from Newark, Delaware. Mazinet being hounded by three on defense. Lee and Sadler going match up. So four very explosive guards here in the CAA as Panovich decides to fire off a 15-footer. Goes to Rye Lee right there. Puts it up a little too soft, and that's one he's going to wish he had back. Drives the lane, pulls up short, just off the mark, but he has been Mr. Consistent as of late for Monte Ross. Fifth straight game, 10 points or more. And this time, as Damian Lee goes for the putback, he is fouled. First two possessions for Drexel Todd. You get quality shots, the shots you want, layups at point blank range. The ball just hadn't been able to go through the basket. So Damian Lee, the leading scorer for both teams right now with 12 points, goes to the line shooting two. And Lee off the mark, the sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland. Do you know if your brother tried to get him into Georgetown or was he uh, I don't. Was I got on their radar? I got to tell him, he missed out on that one. <laughs> I love his size, I love his ability to shoot the ball. Rattles in the second one, 33-25. Now the pace not nearly as frenetic as we saw in the first half. Delaware seems to be going more into their half-court offense. They were just all over the place the first 10 minutes of this game. This is Devon Sadler. That success the Blue Hens did early on going inside to Brinkley. He was able to draw fouls almost every trip down as Mazinet steps back on the three off the mark. Three comes away with the rebound. See that shot from Mazinet, they can get that anytime sure. because he's going to have his ball in the hands. He his hands. He came down and just took a shot. Make a few passes and then look for yourself to try to get into the rhythm. But because they've struggled so much to score, Franz is looking to score more. Meanwhile, Darte Ruffin all over the back of Jamel Hagens. And the question I would have for you is, as a big man, 
Why is he worried about Higgins getting the ball so far outside of the block? Right. You, you don't want to foul that, feet away. that far away from the basket. Fortuitous bounce for the Dragons as Higgins unable to hold on to it. It goes off his knee and it'll go back over to Drexel. Bruiser Flint's telling Ruffin that right now. Don't foul him that far away from the basket. Let him come to you. Yeah, it's not like Higgins is a big you know, three-point threat for Delaware. Thomas, however, is as he finds Lee on the wing being closely guarded by Sadler. Nice driving lane, Thomas. Derek Thomas doing a great job getting inside the lane. Anderson thought about it, dumps it back down. Here's Hagens on Ruffin again, goes to his right off the mark. seconds on the shot clock. Drexel will reset their offense. Lee into the lane. Can't get it to connect. Anderson comes away with it. That time I thought Lee tried to draw the foul as opposed to making the layup. If he'd gone in there strong, maybe shot a left-hand layup, he could have converted the basket. He tried to draw the foul as opposed to just score it. Sadler gets the contact. It may be getting roughing for this one. Sadler always on the attack, always looking to score in multiple ways. You see, he goes to the basket, gives Ruffin by his body, and, and gets the, the free throw attempt. Now he gets a chance to go to the free throw line. And Ruffin, you know, and we touched on it earlier, he's what you call a scorer. And he's not necessarily a hungry scorer. He just takes what you give him. And he's so efficient in the process. Ruffin will have to come out of the game as he picks up his fourth foul with 16.39 to play. So Daryl McCoy checks in for head coach Bruiser Flint. Ruffin picking up that foul hurts Drexel in a huge way because he's the one interior player that Bruiser Flint looks to go to consistently to try and score, to try and give them some kind of inside presence offensively. Now it's just going to be up to the guards for Drexel to try to get him back in this. And the problem there being Darren McCoy, who comes in and spells and has three fouls of his own. So that's probably why we're seeing more of Goran Pantovich, the 6'10 junior from Belgrade, getting some playing time here. Lee on the kick out, goes to his left. Beautiful layup. to go inside to Brinkley. Brinkley turns, finds three blue jerseys there. Great interior defense, and McCoy rips it away. Mazinette, no one stops ball, and he cuts right through the white jerseys for a basket. Four-point run, back-to-back -back baskets for the Dragons, and they've now cut it down to a four-point game. Sadler across the lane, off the mark. They can cut it to two or one. Fans wanted to travel on Lee. Derek Thomas just getting commands barked in his ear. <laughs> Bruce was right over his right shoulder. Lee off the mark. Panovich with a rebound. Reset the shot clock. If Panovich can stay active around the yeah. basket and get rebounds like that, he'll be in for a long time because Six, that gives ten. him another possession. No question. Thomas goes to work on Sadler. And this is some patience by the Dragons here, making this possession count. Well, Delaware knows all they have to do is give all their attention to the perimeter because none of the post guys for Drexel are looking to score. Panovich over the back of Jamel Higgins. Take a look at Lee right here, driving to the basket, showing you his versatility. And then another play by Massinet in transition, coming down with the layup. These two guys are scoring to get him back in it. If you don't put the franchise tag on Flacco, who do you put it on? 
I don't think anyone really wants it because it limits what they can get. I know Ed Reed said, don't put it on me. Right, right. I'd like to get that max money. And, <laughs> and the number that's being thrown around for Joe Flacco is around $20 million. You can do a little bit with that, huh? You can do a little bit of walking around with that. 14-15 <laughs> to play here in the second half. CAA basketball in the NBC Sports Network as Higgins comes up short. And just checking into the game, Akil Younger comes up with the rebound. Thomas matched up on Anderson as they swing it around. Here's the matchup we talked about at the start of tonight's game. Lee being guarded closely by Devon Sadler. Got the height advantage, but the body advantage you've got to give to Sadler as Younger gets in the lane off the right-hand side, misses everything. Baptiste comes away with it. Three, driving through three or four players and thrown down. We watched him warm up, and Jamel Higgins, the young man has the propensity of getting up quickly. You can't let him get his momentum going. you got to put a body on him because he jumps entirely too high. Thomas stripped away. He'll go to the line as he is fouled. Look at it one more time. On the other end, Hagen's got the block, and right here he just runs to the basket and gets the follow-up dunk. Nobody from Drexel puts a body on him, gets up ahead of steam, and just goes up and throws it down. You like to see a big get the benefit of scoring that basket because he's the one that got the block, right? deflected the shot on the defensive end, filled the lane hard, and ended up getting the follow-up dunk. Best dunker you ever saw, either as a player or as a coach? Ever in my life? In your life. That's a tough one. Give me a minute to think okay. about that I know you've been around a lot of yeah, great players. That, that's probably. a tough one. For some reason, I like it when the smaller player gets the dunk because they, you know, obviously. They look better. Yeah, yeah and they when, look better. when they're being guarded. That's why I'm not a big fan of the dunk contest because dunk is always better when it's in traffic. Unless you're the defender, then you just hate it. It <laughs> right. just got posterized. <laughs> right. Under 13 to play, six-minute lead. Blue hands on top of Drexel. Two more games for these teams as they come down the home stretch, and then it's the CA tournament. Great piece of defense there by number 15, Larry Savage. Lost his man momentarily, but a nice recovery. He did. He came through. I thought he got him with the body. The yep. officials didn't call it. Um, but good job by Lee on the rip through, one dribble pull up. Good job by Savage getting the block without the foul being called. Speaking of good blocks, how much do you put into the Kobe block times two on LeBron at the All-Star game? Now, I know it's just the All-Star game. But, but not much because Kobe's such a competitor. Yeah. I, I expect nothing less from Kobe. Sadler going to work on Thomas comes up short. And McCoy rips away the rebound. So it's a four-point lead for Delaware, playing a little lackadaisical. Mazinet comes down, and the foul. What made that basket so incredible by Mazinet is he's got one and a half guys guarding him. Yeah. His guy and then the post guy in the middle. You see right there, come Threet's guarding him, but then Baptiste comes over because he doesn't have to worry about his guy scoring because they're not trying to throw it to Drexel's post guys. And Mazinet still had the ability to finish it with the hit. And the lesson you gave me Monday night, if you're going to foul a guy going to the basket, get your money's worth. Foul Make sure the ball hard. doesn't go up. Don't let him get the ball to the basket, no and ones, because right there, Baptiste had already committed himself yeah. to fouling. Go ahead and get your money's worth. Kazembe Abif checks back into the game. Now, remember, he went out early in this game, picking up three fouls in the first half. See if he can give him a spark as Mazinet hits the and one. So we've got ourselves a one-point game, 12-20 to play in this one from the University of Delaware, CAA basketball, the Blue Hens and the Dragons. Remember the last meeting just about three weeks ago it was a two-point victory for Delaware, 66-64 in Philadelphia. Sadler with Thomas on it. Hagen's being guarded closely by McCoy way outside. And Mazinet comes over and bumps into him, and they're going to get Mazinet on the foul. The Dragons have mounted a comeback. It's a one-point game. Can the Blue Hands hold on? Stick around and find out. It, 
if I am Delaware, I'm going inside to Josh Brinkley and Jamel Higgins, and they, when they get it, just take their time, make your move, because Drexel, the post guys, do not want to pick up fouls. Jarvis three, running the offense now for Monte Ross. Finds Sadler on the wing, fires up a three, nothing there. And it's going to be a foul on the inside on the offensive glass. And unfortunately, it's going to be Daryl McCoy. No, they don't give it to McCoy. Damian Lee picks up his first. So a big bail out there as McCoy was in the same neighborhood. And the officials give it to Damian Lee, who just had one. And a beautiful give and go as Hagens was on the same page as Devon Sadler. Right here, this is what makes Delaware in such a good situation right now. Right now, all their attention is being given towards Massinet as well as Lee. Even their post guys are, are giving them attention as they come off the screens because the interior guys for Drexel aren't scoring threats. Jarvis Street looked like he was going to off to the races, and he looked up, and Coach Ross said, hold it up. That's a much better play. Good read, good body control by Sadler. Took the hit and was able to finish. Right here, you see he rips it through on the baseline, has a biff on his back, and takes the hit and still has the upper body strength to finish that layup. And a biff picks up his fourth foul. I think they've done a very solid job defensively. Right now, if I'm in that huddle, I'm telling McCoy, I'm telling Ruffin, when you guys get back in the game, set solid screens to get Thomas, Massinet, and Lee open because they're the ones that are going to have to continue to hit shots uh, to get us back in the game. But the way those post guys can help is when the shots go up, crash the boards with a vengeance and try to get tip-ins. Saw that stat pop up momentarily. Devon Sadler, 34th straight game, scoring in double figures. Sadler with 14 on the night. 42-36, six-point game. Thomas thought about the three. See, Hagen's in the middle is playing it almost like a one-man zone. He's not really worried about Panovich. He's just trying to clog up the middle and stop all drives. Almost a put back there as McCoy had the position, couldn't get it, and it's ripped away. See, that's an example. McCoy's got to finish that. That's how he can help. That's how he can help with points on the board. Those putbacks, you got to convert those. Ball stolen away, and this would be an easy layup for Thomas. Thomas. So the turnover helping the Dragons at the other end, cutting it to a four-point lead under 10 minutes to go here in Delaware. I guess the one criticism you might have if you look at the Blue Hens and what they've done tonight, because they played a pretty good game, is they haven't been able to finish off Drexel. They've gone on runs, but then they just keep letting them creep back in. Well, that guy right there is going to be the one to have Boom. to do it. <laughs> Sal has got to start to press his game just a bit. So far, this game, he's, he's taking what Drexel's given him. Now he needs to be the leading scorer in this league and get on a roll. You talk about his patience. He certainly has done that now with 17 points. Same amount that Damian Lee for Drexel has. No over and back violation despite what the fans want to hear. Crowd say 14 be honest. I didn't know it was his job to call the foul. To officiate yeah. the game. Mazinet just off the mark. McCoy with a strong rebound up, but can't get it to fall. And Brinkley gets a little love tap. But see, that's good though. McCoy finally looks like he's angry and upset yeah. at something. The, the, the role that he plays on this ball club, he's got to be more active, be a little bit more energetic. That time he looked like he was upset that Brinkley fouled him, which is good. So now the next time he gets the ball, he's going to have a clean angle to the basket because the officials don't want anything to get started. McCoy off the mark. Vaughn Sadler picking up his 17th point, now fourth all time in Delaware scoring. And remember, as Ron pointed out, just a junior. McCoy misses both of them. They get it back. Mazinet fires up a long range three. And a nice rebound by Larry Savage. So 
one. Now Monte Ross has his squad running a little more clock this time, though. Well, Hagens looked like he had a point blank layup. Couldn't decide whether to dunk it or lay it in, and got nothing. Credit Sadler for being unselfish, finding Hagens. But as we get down close to around the six minute mark, forget trying to be unselfish. Sadler needs to take that shot because Hagens missed a, just missed the layup at a point, back rip, point blank range. And, and you remember that, don't you? No question, especially <laughs> as a score. Damian Lee for three. Can't get it. Ball knocked away. Hagens comes away with it. Sadler kicks it down low. Brinkley and the foul. See, so you have to give Sadler so much attention when he's locked in and looks like he's being aggressive. When he's going to the basket, you're seeing defensive guys rotate towards him, and he's doing a good job at finding guys because he's drawing two guys. Watch this. He's going in the middle strong. He draws the attention of two and a half defenders by Drexel, and he's dropping it off beautifully to the post guys from Delaware. Now it's their job to convert either make the layup or when they get fouled, convert these free throws. Josh Brinkley, a 68% free throw shooter, misses the first. He has three points on the night, but his damage really has been done down on the blocks, getting fouls and getting Bruiser Flint squad into foul trouble. The free throw line has been kind to, to uh, Delaware all season. They lead the CAA in terms of field goal percentage, I mean free throw percentage is 76, but they're struggling today. So back to back misses as Drexel comes away. Still just trailing by seven. Right back to Mazinet. A bit hits the baseline. Nice baseline jumper from the Kazembe Abif, who has been in foul trouble much of the night. Just three points in the game. has such a nice handle. Oh, can't get to the rim, but ties it up with McCoy, and he does not get the ball away from McCoy, and he gets called for the foul. But a beautiful drive by three goes for not 708 to play in this one. Blue hands clinging to a five-point lead. The 6'9 senior from Roanoke, Virginia. Ten rebounds on the night. Eight points looking for another double-double. Right now, all he's concerned about is what his coach said at the start of our telecast. Monte Ross looking for their tenth conference victory tonight here at home. So Bruiser Flint now going with a three-guard rotation. He's got... Thomas, Lee, and Mazinet out there. Mazinet finds his way to the rim. Three-point game. Drexel needing a big defensive stand here. Shot clock at 10, and Sadler's bailed out as he was cutting across the lane. Derek Thomas called for the foul. Thomas had no other choice but, but to foul, and that time Sadler refused going over the pick and roll, came back, and Thomas knew he had to foul, and if not, it's going to be two points. Sadler's so, so good with the basketball. You have to respect his crossover, all of his fakes, and even if he catches it and squares up, he doesn't have to put the ball on the floor to score. He can just rise and shoot. This is the front end of a one and one so a good break there for the Dragons. Three-point deficit as we approach six minutes to play. It has been Delaware all night long with the lead. Remember, they started off with a 7-0 run. As Drexel took five minutes to start this game before they got on the scoreboard. They're going to be patient on this trip down. Shot clock at 27. with a step back. 
In and out. Hagens with another rebound. Credit Megan Hagens for that uh, defensive possession. He saw Massinet pulling up for the jump shot, stepped over heads, made Massinet take a little bit more of a deep shot than he wanted. Reed once again able to get into the lane, just can't finish. Massinet comes right back. He's fouled. And he'll send him to the line. So Frank Mazanet, the 79% free throw shooter, goes to the line shooting two, try to cut this one down to a one-point game. The little things, which teams can execute offensively, which teams paid attention to the scouting report defensively, and then, of course, right here at the free throw line, you have to be able to convert free throws coming down these final five minutes. And as you asked me earlier, not much is going to change right now. These guys know have a certain amount of plays in their offensive package on both sides. That's Drexel and Delaware. Right now, between those three or four plays, as a team collectively, Todd, you have to execute yep. right now. Set solid screens. Um, seal your man at the right time. Little things like that will go a long way. Let me ask you this. Is this a good play by Monte Ross? Now putting the ball in Sadler's hand to run the point as Street gets a break. Well, I think it's great because, one, he's your best free throw shooter, and also he can turn corners and get in the yeah. gap. So, you know, you have to respect every motion that he, that he gives you offensively. Sadler coming in line with a hop step and over. Case in point. Drexel <laughs> Bench wanted to travel. They don't get it, and he lays it in. Picking up his 19th point of the game, Devon Sadler, just a junior. Dragons cannot come away empty in this one. Lee drives the lane, can't get it to fall. Great rebound by McCoy on Baptiste, but can't put it in. And Lee got the ball, called time out before it was tied up. So the ball will go to Drexel with a fresh shot. At this point in time, he's the leading scorer in the league. He has the ability to put the ball on the floor and make plays, which is a huge luxury. Why not put it in his hands? Conversely, Drexel comes back, gets it to Lee. Plenty of time on the shot clock. It's just now hitting 20. Mazinet now with the ball being guarded by Sadler, gives it up to a bit. Drexel motion offense, and Lee gets bumped as he goes in the lane and still razzled down, and Bruiser flips one. Where was the foul? Like, he got hit not by one, but two blue hands. Bruiser was correct on that one. A lot of contact on that play, but give Lee the credit for staying with the play and finishing the shot. And on the other end, a relative and went by two more to convert the layup. So Devon Sadler finds himself at the line yet again, already with 19 points on the night, shooting 83% from the free throw line. See, when, when Sadler's involved both in ball screens and you're the big stepping out, you have to make him go that Sadler towards the half court line. You can't let him turn the corners as sharply as he did that last possession. He's too talented, he's too skilled of a score. This is the second one, but this is the 13 game that Sadler's had 20 points or more this season. So a very consistent contributor for head coach Monte Ross. Lee finds himself wide open for three and hits. Damian Lee with a big basket for the Dragons now with 22 points to lead all scores. Good job by Lee taking advantage of the fact that Savage slipped defensively trying to guard him coming off that screen and Lee made him pay. And this is the first lead for Drexel. We'll see how Delaware responds. Remember they had a nine point lead early on up to 10 points. And now it's Drexel who has the momentum as we approach three minutes to play in this game. If you're Drexel, no need to hurry. Be patient and let your primary scores take over. A Biff misses badly off the side of the glass. A Biff is not a primary scorer. He's a slasher, a defender, a guy that gets tip ins. Drexel just taking their first lead of the game after starting off the game, going for the first five minutes without scoring. They find themselves with a one-point advantage, 49-48. Inside to Hagen. McCoy guarding closely. Great hands by Brinkley to handle that bullet. Goes right out of Biff. 
And McCoy with some great defense. Well, you expect Delaware to go with the bigs of Drexel because they've got the foul problems and they respond. McCoy with the block and then the rebound. I really like the fact that McCoy's been aggressive. He's been assertive here late in the second half in terms of getting on the board. Damian Lee to Mazinette. Wow. That was good defense that time by Delaware, but even better offense by Drexler. Brinkley did the right thing. He stepped up, he heads, he showed Massinet a lot of attention. Massinet nailed it anyway. So it's a four point lead now as Drexel feeling the momentum. How will the Blue Hens respond? Devon Sadler easily gets in and one. Big time basket by Sadler. He saw the help coming over to take the charge and slid to the right and was able to convert it anyway. Take a look at this right here. Sadler catches the ball on the wing, sizes his man up, refuses to pick and roll. He sees a Biff coming over to take the charge and just jumps to his right and still is able to finish. That's a major, major move that time by Sadler. And Kazembe Abif picks up his fifth foul, so he will have to come out of the game. And Bruiser Flint's crew very emotional after giving up that basket and one. So they'll sub back in and they'll bring in number 35, Darte Ruffin, the junior out of Stoughton, Mass. Now remember, Ruffin in the same kind of situation. He's got foul problems. McCoy also with foul issues. Both men saddled with four. Sadler can't make it a one point game. So it remains 52 50. Drexel on top as we go under 90 seconds to play here in Newark. Sadler on lead, just like the way they started the game. Mazinet finds himself open, too hard off the back, almost knocked in by Hagens. And they're going to get Daryl McCoy. So a Biff gets taken out with five, now McCoy with five. Take a look at the action and the energy on the offensive boards right here by Drexler. Shot goes up. And McCoy goes over the top. It looked like uh, Hagen's hit it, hit the ball yeah. in the basket, but they call McCoy going over Hagen's back for the foul. You know, it's interesting with all the physical play that we've seen, that kind of foul yeah. doesn't seem to be one that they would have called. But the officials saw it their way, had to make the call, and they made it. So McCoy leaves five fouls, no points on the night. Now remember, Darte Ruffin in the game, really one of their most reliable bigs he has four. You talked about how good of a free throw shooting team Delaware is. Now is their opportunity to shine as Hagens goes to the line, a 76% free throw shooter, and calmly hits the first. And there's the story. Ruffin with four. And Mazinette will be the next one at three. They're all tied up. And Bruiser Flint wants to talk about this one. Remember the last game on the 28th, their offensive woes of Monday night when they had a low scoring battle with Hofstra. They were able to get the victory there. So here it is, possession arrow in favor of Drexel. One timeout left, three for Delaware. Right now, Brinkley really has to look to be the help guy because Pandovich isn't a primary scorer. Ruffin can score a bit on the interior, so Hagens has to give him a little bit of attention. Jarvis Threat is Jarvis Threat, excuse me, is checked back into the game. Lee wanted to pull the trigger, bobble it momentarily, comes right back, can't get it to fall. Sadler comes away with the rebound. And there's four seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock, so Drexel should get one more crack at it. Before that, though, Monte Teams where the coach has asked the best player, how do you want it? You know, as a coach, I've been in a situation asking my best player, how do you want where, where it? Where do you want it? Sadler has opted, put it in my hands, and let me make the decision. 
Sadler coming around the corner, having no problem getting a good look. Puts it off the glass, can't get it to fall. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to be Drexel's ball. Plenty of blue hands around there for the rebound, but they just couldn't get their mitts on it, and it goes out of bounds the way of the Dragons. So 15.8 seconds, shot clock is off. Look for Drexel to push it, get it to right around the hash mark and call timeout as opposed to going and trying to score. That's exactly what they do. Now Bruiser Flint is going to get the grease board and draw up a solid drive, drive with the intent on making the basket and then force the official to, to, to um, make a call. Sometimes if you try to bait the official into a foul, they won't call it. So Derek Thomas will inbounds for Bruiser Flynn and the Drexel Dragons. Lee and Massanet, and it'll go to Massanet. Ten seconds. Look for Drexel to get a driving opportunity because if you're Delaware, you've probably been told don't foul. Massanet blocked away. Good job by Brinkley coming over, giving help. And I told you that it was the support guys that were going to be key in this game. Right here, you see Massanet driving. Brankley leaves Pantovic, comes over, gets a nice block. Right now, his calves are cramping up because of how much energy he's put into this game. And he immediately went to the stretch. Telling Monte Ross, I'm okay. He was ready to substitute Carl Baptiste. Now, remember, there's still 1.7 seconds. It's Drexel's ball. No timeouts for the Dragons. 1.7 is enough time if you're Drexel to catch and shoot. JMU had one second, and they got a shot off at the rim for the win. Mazet's going to have to hurry. We're going to overtime. Here in the CAA, we're all even at 52 as we get set to play another five minutes. Delaware 1-1, one and one, Drexel 0-3 oh in overtime this year. So clearly, the favor to the Blue Hens, as we mentioned moments ago, they have been in very close games as of late, and Hagens wins the tip without any problem. So Monte Ross hoping for a start of the overtime like they got in the start of the regulation, going on a 9-0 run. Amazing after 40 minutes of intense basketball, how these guys are able to jack it back up here at the start of the five minutes in defensive intensity. Very good. Hagens goes to work on the inside. Can't get it to fall over Ruffin. Darte Ruffin playing with four fouls. And they're going to get Anderson on the backside, who was chasing Lee around. So Kyle Anderson now picks up his fourth foul. That'll send Lee to the line. You talked about it. You've got to be able to step up and hit those. And for an 83% free throw shooter like Lee, that's surprising. With as hard as both teams have played, Fatigue has to be a factor, and you touched on it now, your conditioning, your weight program, your diet, all of those things that you start working on in the summer are for right now, this time of the game. Eric Thomas, who's chasing around Devon Sadler, called for his second foul. So Devon Sadler, who has been sensational, especially in the second half, steps to the line with 22 points. He's even with Drexel's Damian Lee. Hits a both. Big time players step up in big time situations. It's not how many you make, but when you make them. Lee answers right back. It looked like the three was down, and it pops out. And Bruiser Flint is beside himself. He's almost headed to the bus. And I, and I, and I don't think he's upset at the official. The reason Bruiser Flint was so angry, Ruffin didn't need to reach. No. He had no shot at getting that ball. So 
And L. Hagan steps up. You touched on it in the first half, how good a free throw shooting team Delaware is. And it's really paying off right now as they have surged out to a three point lead here in overtime. Hagan's can't hit the second. So Tavon Allen, the 6'7 redshirt freshman, now has to check in for Bruiser Flint's squad. Two men have already fouled out. Allen gives Drexel another offensive weapon, somebody that Delaware has to give attention to on the defensive end. As Annette misses badly, tried to create some contact. Referee wasn't buying it. And so Drexel gets this thing into overtime, and now they seem to be a little bit out of whack offensively. Monte Ross says, fellas, let's, ru let's run a little time. It's always a nice solution. You can hand it to Mr. Sadler and let him go to work. It's a huge plus the fact that Sadler can handle the ball so well. Brinkley gives it away. And one. You know, I'll tell you, that time I almost have to put it on Devon Sadler because Brinkley had it in the post and he was telling him to kick it over to Anderson. And he did that exactly, just didn't account for Mazinet. Good job by Drexel in terms of reacting on the turnover, getting out, and Sadler, I think, got him with the body on that shot. So Derek Thomas, a 67.5% free throw shooter, steps to the line. Back to an even game, just when it looked like Delaware was going to surge out ahead. Here come the Dragons. Kyle Anderson's been quiet tonight, one of the best free three point shooters on the squad, counting for just three points on the night. And they're going to get Allen on the reach. So Kyle Anderson now goes to the line. He's a 76% free throw shooter on the season. But we've seen some crazy things tonight, seeing guys in their 80s missing two. And right now, free throw shooting is just incredibly important right now coming down the final stretch. And Delaware is the best free throw shooting team in the CAA. Sunday at 7 Eastern, the NHL is on the NBC Sports Network featuring two of the league's most prolific scores. Steven Stamkos leads the Lightning against Sidney Crosby and the Pens. Sunday at 7 Eastern, on the NBC Sports Network. Anderson rims out, but Jamel Hagens is there to put it back in. I thought Hagens reacted so quickly that the, that the Drexel Biggs had no time to react. The shot went up, and before they had a chance to box, box out, Hagens was already in the air. Allen with a huge three and an interesting story. This young man, this is no joke. He shoots twos with his right. He shoots threes with his left. I have no idea how you get to that in your <laughs> in your workout, but a timeout being called here as three is bumped out of bounds. 58-57. We've got 2:03 to play in overtime. Here's glad to have you with us. CAA basketball on the NBC Sports Network. And this one's complete. We'll send you out to the West Coast. Gonzaga and Saint Mar Santa Clara, excuse me, women's basketball coming up when we're done here in Delaware. Monte Ross not liking the way the offensive set was going, so he calls a timeout. So both teams now with one timeout, buck 52 to play. That well, last possession, uh, Drexel did a great job at corralling Sadler when he came off the pick and roll. Before we diagrammed the fact that they didn't do as good a job and they allowed him to turn the corner and get in the paint. Good adjustment that time by Drexel and making sure that he went towards the half court line. If they take away Devon Sadler, which is very difficult for Drexel to do because he's so good at creating his own shot, who's that secondary man you're looking for? Would it be Anderson or would it be maybe Freed off the wing? I think it's 50-50 after that point. The, the thing that's more important is that they have four other capable ball, play, ball scorers on the floor. Freed can score, uh, Brinkley can score, Hagens is a, is a threat, and then you've got Anderson. Convert, uh, uh, the other way, though, Drexel, they only have, you know, 
three guys that you primarily want to go to. But now that Tavon Allen's out there, he gives you another look. And that's not exactly what Bruiser Flint wanted. Goran Panovic fouls Sadler, and Sadler will go to the line and shoot two, an 83% free throw shooter. He's shooting 83%, but he's missed a yeah. few today. But, you know, as that's why Bruiser was so upset, Bruiser Flynn. You don't want to yeah. put the best free throw screw shooter, the best score in the league at the line. So with a minute 47 to play, we're all tied up. Devon Sadler's at the line. Luhans now with a one-point lead. Fifth 25-point game of the season for Devon Sadler. Each team with one timeout. Thomas with a floater. Can't get it to fall. Ball knocked away. And a great job by Damian Lee to keep it alive. Allen has it. Plenty of time on the shot clock, just now ticking down to 22. You said it, Ron, during the commercial. This is an absolute war. These kids are not backing down an inch. Thomas driving. And he gets bailed out. The foul being called on Kyle Anderson. You know what's great about that move by Thomas? He made certain that he got fouled. Sometimes guys drive and they kind of make contact and still trying to make the shot. Once he committed to drive, he made sure he got contact with his defender. Watch this. He turns the corner on Adams Anderson and he goes into Anderson and flails his arms to make the official have to make that call. Anderson commits his fifth foul. He is done for the night, so they'll sub him out and take bring in Terrell Rogers at 5'8", the freshman guard out of Fort Mill, South Carolina. And you know the problem with that foul by Anderson is he had help. Brinkley was right there protecting his back. So the Blue Hens on top by one. Derek Thomas at the line, a 67% free throw shooter. Uses it all. Right now, Drexel going offense, defense. They're bringing in a kill younger. They want a better defensive player, someone that can put pressure on the ball. If they start making their switches defensively, you have to have a solid defensive ball club on the floor. Thomas hits them both. So a one-point Drexel lead now. So do you play two for one here? Do you try to get a quick basket, or do you, you milk the clock all the way down? No, no, no. You be, because you're Drexel, you've got to go. I mean, because you're Delaware, you've got to go right away. You don't want to wait. You don't want to hold it. But the problem is that's a bad foul. Drexel is putting their best shooter on the free throw line. You can't make this foul 30 feet away from the basket. Panovic has got to get out there early, or if you're late, get in a support mode defensively, but you don't foul your best free throw shooter at this point in the game. You know what the problem is? Goran Panovic saw the Ron Thompson telestration about how you have to cut that line off. He did. But once you, realize, now. once you realize you can't cut it off, you, gotta you let can't him go. foul. Yeah. You have to let him go because the clock becomes as much of a weapon as anything. But now you're putting the best shooter uh, in the league at the free throw line, the best free throw shooter on the team at the free throw line with the clock stop. All tied up, one shot coming from Sadler, as Ron alluded to, 83% from the foul line and 27 points on the night. And he misses badly on that one. Come on, Sadler, I gave you credit. I know. You gotta, you gotta convert them both. <laughs> so Franz Mazanet going right over to Bruiser Flint. Four second differential between the shot and game clock. And Bruiser said, all right, I've seen enough. Call our last time out. Let's talk this thing over. Looks so 13 for seconds Drexel left for Drexel on the shot. Thomas and Tavon Allen, number 11. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Franz Mazanet with the ball. 
Damian Lee. From three, off the right-hand side. And now Fleet has it. They still have a timeout. They want to get it across the timeline and hoist it up. And it's short. We're going to double overtime. I thought three could have gotten an awful lot close to Adler. I, I like the ball in his hands. I like him making the decision on whether to score or to pass. But they definitely have the advantage on the interior with Brinkley and Higgins with their size and their ability to score. Smallest man on the court comes away with it, Terrell Rogers. And a big check down below, which sends Devon Sadler to the floor. Derek Thomas called for the foul. Here it is one more time. There's a little baseline action here. Salas at the bottom of the screen, right underneath the basket. Little contact right there as he was trying to set his man up to come off the screen. It looked like they locked knees. Sadler breaks the tie. I want to remind you, coming up after our game, we'll head west for some women's college basketball as Gonzaga takes on Santa Clara, home of the Broncos. It's a bolt. Still going head to head with Devon Sadler. There it is, the lefty three. So Tavon Allen gives the Dragons a one point lead. Have you ever seen anything like that? No. <laughs> right? No. <laughs> I really haven't. Sadler steps back three, can't get it to fall. It's going to stay here. They're going to call it on Drexel. Drexel foul on 14. Damian Lee is third. Damian Lee called for the reach in. He's saying I boxed out. Shot goes up. Wow. That's not a good call. That's not a good call at all. Tavon Allen just deflected the ball to yeah. his teammate. I don't know how Lee got in the mix. There was no contact on that play at all. Well, Josh Brinkley has had a quiet game, just four points, but his interior presence has been huge. It's a ball. Looking for a hot hand here in the double overtime period. They're going to get a quick call there as Jamel Hagan's trying to cut off once again a very similar play to what Delaware does when they got Panovich just moments ago. Fatigue is huge right now. You know, you, right now your conditioning or lack thereof is going to start to rear his head. Which guys are, you know, hit the weight room hard right, in practice? Which guys push themselves to the limit? You prepare yourself in practice, in the preseason, in the summers for this time of year, not in the early in the year when everyone's happy and excited and everything's going well. It's for when you're in February, coming to March, and you're trying to make a late season run. So far before those free throws, it was 11 of 17 for Drexel, 24 of 35 for Delaware from the line. So not stellar shooting, but you factor in that we're in double overtime period, and those become huge foul shots by Franz Mazanet. Higgins gets the double, kicks it back out. Three there to help him out. Shot clock at 12. Shot clock at five. Three gets it up and one.
Big time play by Jarvis three. Take a look at three. He's pros probing. He's trying to find the angles. They did a good job at defending Sadler, and three had to take it himself. He takes it in there and gets the end one. It's a two-point game, 3.15 to play here in double overtime. And I'm in agreement with you, Ron. This could be the CAA tournament championship game. You could really actually see I mean, these two in the finals. Yeah. Preseason, Drexel um, was picked uh, number one. Right. Delaware was picked number two. You know, because of injuries, because of certain things, things haven't panned out that way. But late season, everyone's starting to get healthy. You're starting to see chemistry to kick wow. in. Wow. What a drive by Massanet as he goes behind his back and cuts the defense right up the middle. Remember the last game they played on January 28th in Philadelphia? It was a 66 64 affair. Went the way of the Blue Hens. We're 67 all with 228 to play in double overtime. Sadler cut off, kicks it over to Hagens. Too much dribbling. Great defense. Great defense by the Blue Hands, and Sadler's left back by himself. Just one point away from a career high, which came against Kansas State earlier this year. Drexel being very cautious with the ball, driving the lane, and bringing it a foul. Thomas was driving in the lane, and it looks like they're going to. Terrell Rogers, the freshman, picking up his first. So that sends Derek Thomas to the line, a 67% free throw shooter. He's six for six on the night. Thomas has hit some big time free throws in this game. Minute 43 to go, Dragons trail by one. Thomas looks to knot it up. We're all even. And that's why you want your seniors on the floor. Thomas is a senior. He's been through it all. There's nothing he's going to see in tonight's game that he had been through already. Coming up on 90 seconds to play here in double overtime. Three losing the handle momentarily. Bodies on the floor. Now it's wide open as Rogers comes up with it. And he is just mowed down from behind. So Terrell Rogers, the freshman out of Fort Mill, South Carolina, will score the line. The bad news for Drexel is he's a 91% free throw shooter. You're starting to see mistakes on both parts because of fatigue. That time three, that was a fatigue turnover, mental as well as physical. Drexel is seven of eight in this overtime session from the foul line. Delaware, 11 of 15. <laughs> Went to practice yesterday to watch Delaware, and this is something they practice at the very end when you're tired, exhausted. Coach put him in the line and made everyone step up and hit a game-winning free throw shot. Rodgers hits the second, breaks the tie. Allen's had a big three here in the second overtime period. Damian Lee has had a heck of a game as well. They'll put the ball back in the hands of Franz Mazanet as we go under a minute to play. Shot clock now at eight. Thomas working on Rogers, spinning, hitting. Good job by Rogers. He went to drive baseline, I mean by Thomas, and he realized that Rogers was four feet shorter than him, four inches shorter than him. He just measured him and turned and jumped over. Him. 
Rodgers in the lane, gets a shot up. They're gonna call a foul on Tavon Allen. Let's go back and look at this one more time. Watch this, he tried to dribble through, but then he just realized, look, I'm four inches taller than this guy. He just turned, measured, and just jumped over. Made the play simple, big time shot again by the senior. 6-4 on 5-8, senior on freshman, but Rodgers will go back to the line. Remember, he missed one of two last time down. Drexel has a one-point lead, 36.8 seconds to play here in double overtime. Mind, mind you, as soon as this game's over, we're sending you off to Santa Clara women's basketball, Gonzaga and the Broncos. This young man's father was quite a player as well. Heck of a player. Shante Rogers out of Baltimore, uh, went to George, George Washington, Washington, had a heck of a college, college career. Just stopped playing overseas a year ago. And his son has just hit two huge free throws. So Will Townsville checks into the game. He's senior guard out of Newark, Delaware. Seen his first action of the night. Nice time to sub him in with 33 seconds to play. Your team up by one. And just one and a half second differential on shot and game. And a timeout called. So 15.5 seconds to go. 72-71. Blue hands on top. And if you go back to the start of this game, it seems like it was yesterday. Because <laughs> Delaware got out to such a fast lead, 7-0. And then it was Damian Lee show coming back on. Well, Lee started early on, and then Massinet was driving to the basket. And these two guys with one two punch early on, they got Drexel back in this game. And then at the end of the first overtime, Three jacks up a shot, thought he could have gotten a little bit closer, and then right there he drives, makes up for it by getting the and one. So that's where we are. Coming up on 940 in the east. Second overtime. The Blue Hens have a one-point lead. The last time these two played, it was a two-point win for Delaware in Philadelphia. 15 and a half seconds. Coach Thompson, who are you going to? What are you dialing up? Ah, it's a tough one. It's a really, really tough one. When you take a look at it, obviously, Massinet has to be heavily involved in it as well as Lee. So one of those two guys are going to take it. And then don't forget Tavon Allen is the third option. Almost stolen away by Hagens. That'll chew up some time. Shot clock at 10. Damian Lee trying to drive in the lane. He'll pull up, shoot a three. Off the mark. Hagens with a rebound. Biggest rebound of the game. Great job by Hagens rebounding out of his area. He didn't wait for the ball to come to him. He clearly went to the other side of the lane, jumped up above everyone, and got that rebound. That was key. Watch this. The shot goes up. Lee does a good job. Step back. Got a good look. But watch Hagens come into your picture. He was on the other side of the lane. Tavon Allen did not get him out of there and get to the basket. So Jamel Hagens, the senior from Roanoke, Virginia, with a huge rebound. 3.7 seconds to play here in double overtime. And Hagens will go to the line, shooting 76% from the free throw line. Whether it's Jamel Hagens or Derek Thomas, both ways we've seen seniors come up with big time plays. Goran Pantovic fouls out for Drexel. So their third big man fouls out. Ruffin, McCoy, and Pandovich all gone. Battles it out. So they're still live for the Drexel Dragons. But it's going to have to be quick. With 3.7 seconds left, with the way this game was played, it's a shame, yeah. Todd, that somebody has to lose this game. Remember, Massinet did hit a 50-footer earlier this year to give the Dragons a win. So 3.7 seconds to play, no timeouts for Drexel. It's a two-point Delaware lead. Three-pointer wins it, two-point ties it. Massinet. Gets it off. And Drexel wants a goaltend.
Let's see if he's got a case. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa, he's got it. I want to see that again. Let's Watch see if the it's, spin of the let's ball. See if it's on its way down. Ah, that, he, he definitely made contact. The question is, if we can see it again, is the ball on its way down? Yes, that is goaltender. You Bruce see the spin of the ball as the ball continues. Bruiser and Flint has a point, but we had to watch that play four times to determine sure. in slow motion. Imagine the game speed the decision officials had to make. Jamel Hagens does a big sigh of relief. He may have 